I really do love PSAs. The good intentions of wanting to inform the public about important information is always met with the immediate challenge of, well, how do we make sure they actually listen? So what'd you do about it? I didn't do anything. Whoa. What? Guys, don't be like my friend here who didn't do anything. Not doing anything is part of the problem. Which is almost always followed up by, well, how about we try to make it hip and cool? Or just, you know, trying to scare the shit out of people. Whatever works. As I'm sure you surmise, this time we're having a look at some rather outdated and very corny internet safety PSAs. Where I'm sure the takeaway message will be some variation of the internet is a terrifying place you should avoid it at all costs. Not to say the obvious, but I'm not saying here that any of the overall messages are bad, just that the execution can sometimes be... unfortunate. To start us off, we have one with a title that is already filling me with confidence. The 10th grade dance is coming up, and Maggie is really excited. Ah, good for her. Especially because her boyfriend is going to be there. <laughs> to get ready, Maggie and her friends go to the mall. They're having such a great time that Maggie decides to get some pictures of herself with her camera phone. Her camera phone. You know, as opposed to her phone phone. And she's thinking of sending some of the pictures to her boyfriend along with some racy texts. You want sexy time? Hey, girl, you want some fuck? Now, hold on a second. Is Maggie making a good choice here? Yes, she is, because Maggie's an independent adult who can make her own decision. Oh, wait a minute. Think about this. A picture message picture message can be easily forwarded and posted to website. Oh, God, just not the face page. Now, of course, it's fine to share everyday pictures on sites like Facebook and MySpace. Oh, now Facebook exists. OK, but those pictures should always be rated G. A good rule of thumb for sharing pictures is make sure your grandmother would approve. Well, shit. Photos can be altered, too, to make it look like Maggie was taking part in a crime or that she was smoking marijuana at school. Or doing a sweet ass kickflip. Both could get her in serious trouble. Yeah, but like, couldn't they also do that with the G-rated photos too? This is just making me afraid of posting anything. After all, Maggie wants a job this summer. And what if the person doing the hiring finds a picture of her like this? So what I'm getting from this one is, don't post anything online, ever. Wait a minute. Internet safety, a cautionary tale. This one goes on for six minutes, so I recommend getting comfortable. I didn't tell him anything about myself. We just... talked. Have you seen Lolita? That's one of my faves. Okay, well, if that's not immediately a red flag. Interesting technique from this guy. He's gone for the hiding in plain sight approach. Damn it, I should have said Despicable Me too. Anyway, since this one goes on for so long, I'll just summarize the following events. So this dude Googles her chat room username and finds her My Free Space account, right? A page where she has publicly displayed her age and location. This guy's gotta have the most incriminating search history. I'm not quite sure how ISPs monitor these things, but I'm pretty sure someone with this many search terms in a row is gonna be at least a little bit concerning. The guy over there staring at us. You know? I don't think so. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Got him in that shitty 240p Blackberry phone quality. I can almost see their outlines. Nice dog. Do I know you? Aren't you Jennifer's dad? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is the least suspicious man of all time. I was talking to Beth when Alex signed on. I freaked. How did he know I had a dog? Dog? I freaked. How did he know I went to sleep last night? Night. Night. So you think he's been following you? You think he just appeared? I don't know. I could be watching you right now. Oh, wow. Thanks. I'm sure that will make her feel better. Oh, oh my god, I think the editor's having a stroke. I'm on my way to pick up Jennifer. Do you need a ride? Come on, it's just a couple blocks. Wait, hold on a sec. There was a bit earlier where she wouldn't let some guy she bumped into help her pick up the books she dropped because she was too afraid of everyone. But this random dude that she met at the park for like five seconds asking her to get into his car didn't raise any concerns. I thought I was smart. I was on the honor roll 
and I was an outstanding student. Okay, hold on, now you're just bragging. The police told me how I could have prevented this from happening. Oh, if only there had been a way. Hi, Tom. What you doing? Hey, Cassie. I don't know. Yeah, me either, Tom. Is something bothering you? Sort of. You could not be any less helpful here, Tom. I was surfing the net last night, and I saw some things. Some things came up that made me feel really lousy. You know, that happened to me once, too. I was really uncomfortable of what I saw. Oh, cool, they found my channel. Whenever you're online, doing what you're supposed to do, and something comes up on your screen that makes you feel bad or uncomfortable, you should tell your parents right away. Anyway, I think you got the idea by now. Pretty much all of these cyber safety ones follow the exact same formula of that 12-year-old you're talking to? Well, they're actually a 48-year-old man, and you should never trust anyone ever. So to move on, I thought we'd also have a look at a couple of the funniest genre of PSAs, anti-piracy ads. These are some of the best because they just cannot work out for the life of them how to make paying for stuff look more appealing than not paying for stuff. <laughs> You know it's illegal, download copyrighted music, I'm taking you in. <laughs> and while I'm on the topic, I love how they always have to have like 10 minutes of unskippable FBI warnings promoting anti-piracy to the people who already paid for the movie. But you know what doesn't have 10 minutes of unskippable warnings? This is Jimmy. That's not his real name, and we can't show you his face because Jimmy is a video game pirate. <laughs> Ooh, this one's gonna be good. Why do you do it? Is it an ego thing? Is it a challenge? You can, it, that is part of it. You can, like, tr try to be the best you can be on the board. Yeah, see, we here on the face page of a hierarchy, depending on how many indie developers we pirate into the ground. Uh, Jimmy over here is only a rank 24 pirate, so we basically don't associate with him. As for me, though, I got this shit for free. Check it out. <laughs> cool, right? But also, it's a matter of get, not paying for stuff. That is true. Paying for stuff does suck. The man has a point. What would most video game pirates be involved in? What type of activities? Uh, the, the newest one that's uh, come to light recently is the, uh, the copying of games onto computer disc. Oh boy, I sure hope that doesn't catch on. Some of these BBSs charge about 30 bucks a week. And they'll let you download all the video games they have. Wait, what? That's still paying for stuff, Jimmy. I thought the whole point here was that I didn't have to pay for stuff. We asked Jimmy to show us how it works. Jimmy, no! The boards will never forget this, Jimmy. We're demoting you at least two ranks for this. So this thing right here is the game copier. The controversy is all about this, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you say this was 500 bucks? 500? Jimmy, this sounds like you're paying for things a lot, actually. I don't understand, man. I thought you got me. In Montreal, this past April, they raided 11 pirate BBSs. The biggest bust of pirate boards to date. But is Jimmy worried? Actually, I'm not too worried about that. There's too many boards going what? on. What? I, I can't hit the cars. And finally, to round things off, here's one of those very annoying pre-DVD trailers that I'm sure you've seen like a million times, always accompanied by the sound of you mashing the skip button. Bob's invited his friends to watch a DVD he bought in a store. Jim's invited his friends to watch a pirated DVD he bought on the street. Okay, so right off the bat, why would you buy a pirated DVD? I know official ones go for like $40 now, but doesn't that defeat the entire purpose? Bob's DVD looks amazing. Jim's DVD doesn't. Jim is wondering why he spent $14 on a pirated disc when he could have just downloaded it for free. Bob's DVD sounds perfect. Jim's DVD doesn't. That's gonna wake the neighbors. Jim's DVD is transmitting an alien signal designed to awaken the dormant sleeper agent in the room. Bob's DVD makes sense. Guys, are we sure this is the best clip to demonstrate this point? Jim's DVD doesn't. Next to see me, I would lost my eye. What the? Ah, uh, yep, found the undercover agent. Bob's DVD brings all his friends closer. Jim's DVD makes all his friends disappear. What kind of pretentious friends must you have for them to get so upset over a lower quality movie that they walk out of your house? 
I think my favorite part of this whole ad is the complete contrast in tone from the narrator. Bob regularly visits community centers to assist with feeding the homeless and even gifted a street performer $20 on his way home. Jim is wanted for tax fraud and is a known fugitive in 27 countries. Also, look, I'm not an expert on fraudulent discs, but I'm pretty sure that Die Hard DVD is looking a bit strange there, Bob. And I think that's about all I wanted to watch about online safety. But I hope you learned a thing or two about not putting your fucking age and address on your public profile. As always, a very special thank you to this month's top DB patrons. Alex the Sandwich, Ender Pigman 9, Gulag, Ice Demon, Jake, Just Some Random Guy, Middle Run 1, Nightcore Games, Pineapple Monster, Primal, Proof Space, Sergio Arturo 1117, and Wooloo. And I think I've even got some time for some fan mail. I got a big box today. Hey DB, I'm a huge fan of you. You're so funny and I die laughing. One question, will you bring back Cherish forever? No. I also am a fan of anime and manga. It's so much fun watching your videos and here is something I did. Hey Bolt, get the fuck away from me. That was a nice short and sweet one. Dear Diamond Bolt, congratulations, you are my first fan mail letter. I've loved your videos since my brother showed me your Cursed Transformers commercials. You've always made me laugh and I can always relate. I've been recently watching the old Flash Games videos because I can't play them myself. You still can play Flash Games, you just have to download the Flash player yourself and then insert them onto your computer. It's it's not that difficult, it just sounds like it is. Can you rip apart the Animal Crossing series? Hey, what did Animal Crossing ever do to anyone? Have you ever been to a summer camp? I would love to hear your experiences. Unfortunately, yes, I've been three times, but I'd rather never talk about it ever. Thanks for actually reading this and putting a spin on all my childhood. From James. Well, thank you, James. Dear Sir Emerald Dash the Third. It's Kayla again, but the rest of the letters I send you, I'll be using my nickname Salad. I'm assuming that since how long it took my last letter to get to your house, this one will take one, two, or three months to get to your house. That is not my fault, okay? You blame the post office. When this letter gets there, I think it'll be June, July, or August. <laughs> Did I guess the date right? Nope. And uh, this is the first time I've been happy about that. Does Ghost Freak still haunt your dreams? A little bit. What has been your favorite fan letter? Not counting mine, of course. I love all of them equally, but obviously the papyrus letter. <laughs> do you like it when you get packages from fans? Yes, I do. What's your favorite dinosaur? I would have said Velociraptors until I found out they had like feathers or hair or something, and now they're just weird. Do you know the name of your male man or woman? Nope, but we're basically besties. Ever considered coming to the States? When times get better. Yes. Do you know what the game Job Simulator is? Yes, I do. My brother made me buy it and it is hilarious. Are you still terrified of spiders? Completely and utterly. I'm sending with all these questions, a drawing of Job Bot. Hopefully you know who that is. Hope your life is going well since 2020 is over. Hallelujah. But what's this? A bonus question. What grade did you start making YouTube videos? Uh, I was 13. So what was that? Year seven, I think. Ha, I bet you weren't expecting that. Now I'm dumb being an idiot and showing my stupidity to thousands of people. I think it's as good a time as ever to say thank you for reading and enjoy life because it will be over before you know it. Jeez, that got dark. Signed, Salad. Very entertaining to read, so thank you, Salad. This is Salad from the Future. Sorry, the letter got so long that I had another suggestion. There's a movie I like to watch from time to time called Monster House. Yes, I've heard of that one. I don't know if I'll do a video on it, but damn, do I want to watch it again. And they have indeed sent me Jobbot from Job Simulator, the thing that I keep throwing things at. Now it's package time. This was very exciting to get in the mail. Ooh. <laughs> I want to say right off the bat, I fucking hate Funko Pops, but this one gets a pass, okay? That is... That is incredible. Diamond Bolt. My name is Shay and I am from the north of Ireland. I first found your channel at the end of 2018 and the first video of yours I watched was Ben 10 Cherish Forever. I hope you like the custom Funko Pop me and my brother made for you. You bet I do. <laughs> do you collect Funko Pops? Not consensually. Why do you not have more money? That is a very good question. You should ask the government and income tax about that. What music do you listen to? Very broad scope, but mainly Backstreet Boys. Will you ever go to conventions after COVID? I would love to and I'm waiting for it to go the fuck away so I can finally go. Favorite Favorite MCU, Disney, Star Wars, an all-time movie. Uh, favorite MCU, Spider-Man Homecoming. Disney is... Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> Star Wars is Rogue One. And all-time favorite movie is a very tough one, but here are a few contenders. Do you like all these shows and movies? The Umbrella Academy, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Misfits in the Office. I've not seen two of those. My brother made no, me watch some of The Office, God and I love Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Anyway, I really like your channel and can't wait for it to keep growing. Sian, goodbye in Irish. I... I can't... <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. I'm gonna cherish the shit out of this. And in true Funko Pop fashion, I am never taking it out of the box. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was worth the wait. Thank you very much to everyone who sent me mail today. If you guys want to send me anything for me to open a thousand years later, please send it to this address here, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Nailed it. Goodbye. <laughs>